Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome to another Eternal Bruce video. I'm still quite sick, but I figured I can't let you guys go any longer without any um, new deck fodder, without any new deck techs. So I sat down and yeah, have another sweet Eternal Brew for you with some of the new cards from Dead Reckoning 2 to be precise. So let's dive right in. All right, let's take a look. So I called this deck Dragon Midrange, like Skycrack Dragon Midrange basically, um, since it is very much a dragon-centric deck, the most dragon-centric deck we've had so far, I would say. We had my old Skycrack Dragons at some point, that was more of a midrange control deck, this is more of a like aggro control, like midrange aggressive deck in a way, and makes good use of the awesome new Oni Dragonsmith. A card that I really, really like. It's just missing enough support to be a top tier uh, card. Since, um, yeah, with enough support, I think uh, somewhere in the future the card might easily become uh, like top tier um, constructed card because the card itself is really powerful. It just needs more um, good four cost or even maybe a three cost dragon. Although I doubt a 3 cost dragon is going to happen, because that means you can turn 1 this, turn 2 the dragon, and attack for 3, that's likely too good. But even like a second good 4-drop uh, dragon, and maybe like dragons outside of uh, Primal, so you don't have to be Skycrack, because Skycrack has some glaring weaknesses that make it hard to play any mono Skycrack deck that isn't hyper-aggressive. But yeah, all in all, the card's really powerful. A 1-1 one, one for 1 that reduces the cost of um, dragons and lets you accelerate into them is great already. And then as soon as you drop the first dragon turns into a 3-2 three three quick draw is amazing. I really like the card, it's just sad that it's a bit short on support right now. <clears throat> and the other uh, big card from Dead Reckoning that is flying under the radar for sure is Ward Wielder. The card is also actually really amazing and indirectly also a a dragon theme card since the best card to pair it with is Mist Veil Drake and you really want the Mist Veil Drakes to have these uh, nut draws of turn 2 5-5 five, five Ward Wielder uh, with the um, Mist Veil Drake in your opening hand. Okay, let's take a look at the deck. So it's a bunch of units, the 4 Oni Dragonsmiths, the 4 Ward Wielder as early game. Then on turn 3 I'm currently drawing uh, some Daring Pioneers. They have been like um, mixed, sort of. The problem is just that um, you don't really want to play four of those because you can never have two in play, because if you have two in play, the opponent plays one spell and both die. I initially had four and I just had too many spots where I either had multiples and sort of needed to play multiples to do something and then got blown out and yeah, so I shaved down to three. But the card can be situationally nice and against aggressive decks that have very few spells, for example, it's a really great roadblock early on. And also if they have a spell, the spells they use would kill it anyway, like their removal, their torch or their uh, finest hour, if it was a regular three drop that didn't have four health, for example, or even outside of torch, even if it had four health, like a vanquish or a finest hour or an annihilate would kill it anyway. Or any other like combat trick or mortar or something. So um, yeah, the card just doing a decent job. And even against control, it might um, force them to throw away a good card, like maybe having to uh, trade their Wisdom of the Elders for it or something, uh, which is still decent. And sometimes if you play it on like the right turn, <clears throat> it can force them to having to delay their um, harsh roll for a turn, and that might be the difference between winning and losing. So well timed pioneer can have some nice uses. Then we have for Yeti Furflinger. This is the first deck that really can support and wants Yeti Furflinger in my experience. Um, it's the first time I got to uh, seriously try the card and I was quite happy with it. Like Nightfall is still a sh sort of shitty mechanic and I wish it just didn't have Nightfall. But to be fair, I think it has Nightfall to sort of balance uh, it down a bit because a three cost, three, four, uh, with such a great ultimate in a mono, uh, as a mono faction card, and just a rare is actually pretty premium. Like I think if it was, if it didn't have Nightfall, that would be a legendary most likely. Um, yeah, the ultimate is great. It provides you with a flying attacker. 
if a guy on the ground is stalled out, it provides you with a um, worse but free polymorph on premium threats from the opponent, and the 3-4 body makes it immune to stuff like Hailstorm, Torch, and also a great blocker against aggressive decks. Card has been all around amazing, and the power base of the deck has been very good at supporting it, with only 6 fire sources out of 26, plus the island's favor, so 6 out of uh, 30 uh, don't support it, so you can very consistently play the card on turn 3 actually, so that's really nice. Then we have for Crimson Firemore, the cheapest and best dragon in the deck. Turn 1 only Dragonsmith, turn uh, 3 Firemore is amazing, especially turn 1 Dragonsmith, turn 2 Ward Wielder with a Mistvale Dragon Hand, and then turn 3 Firemore is like the nut draw of the deck that gives you an incredible board that puts every aggressive deck board to shame at that point and every mid-range deck, mid -range deck board. It's just really, really powerful and the cost reduction is actually quite relevant when you are playing a bunch of 5, 6 and 7 cost dragons and especially on a Thunderstrike Dragon uh, getting both copies reduced is a big big deal. Um, yeah, Palatian Drake, like the next best dragon so to speak. Um, one more expensive so you can at least go like turn 3, turn 4 dragon with this. The deck sometimes struggles a bit to spark it in some scenarios, like it's not super reliable at sparking but it's still decent and sometimes it's also just fine as a 6-3 um, if the opponent doesn't have a 3 attack um, flyer or something because the evasion makes up for the uh, lack of spark sometimes. And yeah, it just hits really hard. It, if it's sparked, it blocks everything the turn it comes down. So it basically locks down the board hard for one turn and then starts pounding the opponent real hard. And then we have Thunderstrike Dragon. Um, actually, a premium card that... Uh, yeah, sees play too little because it often just doesn't have the right home for it. Not because it's not good enough, the card is actually really, really powerful. Um, a 5 6 flyer for 6 is a bit below the curve, but given that you get 2 and that the 5 6 still matches up well against most units in the game, only a handful of units outclass it, it's not that big of a deal that it um, arguably costs half a power or a power more than it normally would without the echo and then getting two copies is just so powerful and reducing the cost by with only dragonsmiths and crimson fire more makes it even more powerful this is one of the um yeah most powerful cards in the deck sort of that just overwhelm a lot of opponents by just jamming a bunch of dragons until you eventually can just kill the opponent in one or two swings and last but not least we have mist veil drake um, deck is really good at keeping face Aegis up, so this is a pretty reliable 6-6 uh, six, six flying Aegis. Also, I already mentioned the synergy with Ward Wielder. Having free face Aegis has also a bunch of um, other random benefits, so that is nice too. Um, it's a bit clunky and expensive at 7, unfortunately, but it's um, the fact that only Dragonsmith makes it cheaper and that it's so good with Ward Wielder, and we also have Fire More to sometimes make it cheaper is definitely worth it. Um, it's also nice that if you draw it with a strategize and then bottom it, you still get the face Aegis, so you don't have to keep it in your hand until the spell resolves, so that's really cool. That's something worth uh, keeping in mind. And a 6-6 flying Aegis is actually a really good threat. It beats Ikaria, um, beats any weapon other than like Rise for weapons, and um, yeah, overall it's just a pretty good threat against mid-range and control decks. Against aggro, it's obviously just low and clunky. Then we have some pretty good and cheap removal for Permafrost and for Torch. Permafrost is a bit so-so right now with more tar rods and stuff again, but it's still decent. And also the best you have in uh, Skycrack, really. That's one of the bigger issues in Skycrack. Um, for Aileen's favor is part of the power base and part of the Ward Wielder engine. <coughs> Strategize to... Um, not needing to run more power, because normally 30 power would not be enough even with Dragonsmith for these 6 and 7 drops. But together with Strategize, the deck um, gets enough power drops to eventually play these, even with, with uh, Dragonsmith being silenced or dead. And yeah, then 3 Polymorph just as like additional removal for bigger threats basically, because that's the best you have really in uh, Skycrack. And the power base pretty straightforward. Minimum amount of fire sources for fire more, because we really want to be able to play it 
on turn three or turn four. So we need like 18 fire, arguably, or turn three we would need a bit more, but I don't run a uh, run more fire sigils, and there's no more like um, other options, and we really need enough sigils for our seed. I think. I mean, maybe you could um, consider shaving one primal sigil for a diplomatic seal or a common cause, but not sure if that even gets you uh, that far. <coughs> and there's not that many units with the same type to begin with, so I'm not sure if I like that anyway. And then yeah, just 12 duels, 4 Cobalt Waystone, 4 Ward Wielder and Drake. And yeah, that rounds out the deck. Um, the deck initially has actually been doing really well for me and crushed people for a while and climbed me into like the top 5 last season. Um, but by now, over like 40 games, I'm at like 23 and 17. So it's still like winning, it's still a winning deck, still a decent deck, but it's in the end, not much more than a brew like any Skycrack deck that isn't aggro, just because it has some glaring weaknesses and uh, serious issues reliably dealing with a bunch of powerful cards. So, um, yeah. I could also see, by the way, that you need a fourth Polymorph by now, with so much Tavrot again, so I couldn't fault anyone for adding another Polymorph. And yeah, that's it for the decklist. Uh, deck is a lot of fun and really cool, and... Dragonsmith and Wardwielder are two really cool and powerful cards that hopefully get enough support in the future to uh, be playable in like top tier decks, because right now they are unfortunately falling a bit short. Alright, that's it for the deck. As usual, gonna hop into some games, show it in action, show you guys how it plays out and how to pilot it. Uh, stay tuned for the first game coming up next.